welcome back to Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. We've donned the fancy lab coats, and that can only mean one thing, Garage Ed. Today, we're talking about intake air temperature and engine coolant temperature sensors. Pretty cool stuff, John. It really is cool stuff. It's about talking about the actual air coming into it. What's the temperature and the temperature of the coolant? Why do we want to do that? Well, it's all about that stoichiometric once again. Cold air, we need more fuel. Not as cold air, not as much. So here's how it works. This is an intake air temperature sensor right here on the board, and I have an engine coolant temperature sensor. Well, they both work the same way. Take a look at this graphic. They're actually negative coefficient thermistors, or they could be positive coefficient. We don't care. It's just measuring resistance. And what happens is when resistance changes, you can see the chart down there. At different temperatures, you have different resistance value. Now, the computer, he can't feel it. He doesn't know what's going on, but he does know voltage. So once that voltage correlates to that chart, it can tell what to do with the fuel delivery. Now I can actually show it to you right here. I have one and if you're going to measure one at the house, you can do this right at home. That chart's available. You can go look at it on the internet and find it. Switch your meter over to ohms of resistance. Once I did that, you can look at the chart. I'm at room temperature and I'm at 3,200 ohms of resistance around there, 230. You look at the chart, we're perfect for this temperature. Now the cool part is if I take this and I heat it up just like the engine would with the coolant, you can see it going down. It gets hot, Resistance goes down. Well, resistance goes down, more voltage is sent back to the computer. He knows exactly what temperature it is, and he knows where to make the fuel delivery calculations. Now, I got it hooked up to the scan tool, and I can show it to you in action. That's pretty cool because I can come over here through a little manipulation in the board, and we can look at it. Now, I'm going to take the air temperature. I'm going to change it. Pretend you started your car. Well, when you started your car, you can see on the right, it went to about 102 under the engine compartment, and then what happens? Well, now that should about stay the same, but here goes the engine temperature. As my car is heating up, and heating up and heating up, bam, I go all the way up with the engine temperature. That's what's happening. So in the morning, they should be about equal, and then once it starts running, the air temperature should stay the same and the coolant should start to rise. That's a good diagnostics. We're actually looking at it here of how the sensor works, but what if the wire harness is not working and the computer's not getting a signal? Hey, no worries. Brian's got us covered. Well, cool is critical. Now I got this sensor. This is the engine coolant temperature sensor harness. We're going to check this, make sure it's reporting back to the computer properly. The sensor itself is, of course, stand on your head, do a dance, sing a song, and you can get down to it. It's way down in there. We don't know if we've got to change that yet or not. Remember, it lives in that cooling passage where antifreeze is flowing by so it can actually measure it, exactly what John showed you. We are going to measure the wiring harness. So. Now, here's a little tip. When you're pulling that connector off, sometimes very gingerly get a flat blade in behind there, release the hasp, and just take your time working that back off. That's tip one. Tip two is, you're doing this in the driveway. You need all the help you can get. I have a scan code reader that plugs into the OBD2 port. We'll show you what that's going to do. It's Bluetooth connectivity to my phone out here or a tablet, and that's really helpful because you can see the results as you go. So, we're reading currently minus 40 degrees because it's disconnected. That tells us the ECU thinks this engine is at minus 40 degrees. And if we were to start it, if it would even start, we'd get a ton of black smoke. It would be dumping a bunch of fuel in there, telling the injectors, do your thing to heat me up. Well, when we take our fancy tool, I keep this in the top drawer of the toolbox. So what we're going to do is jumper this connector right across both posts, and we're going to take this status from minus 40 degrees to its full measuring potential, which is 302 degrees. You see the change? 40 to 302. What that means is when you jumper it is, this wiring harness is good. It's, it's reporting full potential of voltage back to the ECU, which means if you were try to, to try to start it now, you wouldn't get any fuel because it would say, huh, you're way too hot, no more fuel for you. So we validated that the wiring harness is good. If we still had a problem, it would be time to change that engine coolant temperature sensor. Again, stand on your head, get sideways, and then you can get it out. But not terribly hard to understand, but super critical. This guy is yet one more key enabler to the ECU power balance equation.